Welcome back to the world of Primin B. If you would like to learn about the formation of Primin B or learn about its first life, make sure to watch the previous episode. If unicellular life does not interest you, feel free to continue with this video. Today, we will explore the introduction of multicellular life and how it evolved into different body plans over a 115 million year period. Last episode, we introduced the colonial Tenex Malia. Some clades of Tenex Malia became increasingly dependent on communicating and sharing nutrients with each other. In one clade, this became so extreme that Tenex Malia cells began having specialized jobs in their colonies. This started with Tenex Malia releasing pheromones based on their needs. Exposure to different pheromones caused developmental differences in each individual cell. Cells could specialize for colonial structure, oxygen collection, nutrient collection, waste removal, and reproduction. This organism has a soft, porous body that allows it to passively diffuse oxygen and nutrients. It reproduces by forming a lump on its external structure. Pheromones are then released into this lump that causes the growth of the reproduction cells. Once it is ready, it separates from the parent organism and lives on its own. The soft bodies of these organisms give them the name Malacosoma. They appeared 5.65 billion years ago. Before malacosomes could become more complex, they needed a more efficient digestive system that would allow for them to develop more complex features and behaviors. One clay developed a blind gut that allowed it to more efficiently digest larger particles. This blind gut is filled with specialized cells that allow it to break down nutrients. Its integument became thick and flesh-like. This allowed it to avoid being damaged. Over its integument, a calcified shell was formed. This shell further protects the organism and helps it keep its shape. In order to collect as much food as possible, this organism developed long, fleshy tendrils from its dorsal side that wave water into its mouth. These tendrils are controlled by muscle-like tissues in the base of the organism. These tissues involuntarily expand and contract, causing the tendrils to move. To reproduce, the reproductive cells that were previously made by this organism became specialized unisex gametes. These gametes are produced and released from a gonad-like organ at the entrance of this organism's mouth. When any two gametes meet, they produce a larva that remains suspended in the ocean current until it grows large enough to sink to the ocean floor. This more effective feeder is called dorsostoma, and it appeared 5.6 billion years ago. So far, all multicellular organisms have been sessile, meaning they are unable to move on their own. After billions of years of living things dying, the ocean floor became covered in a layer of dead organic matter called detritus. One lineage of dorsostomes evolved to take advantage of this food source by having two mouths on its underside rather than one dorsal mouth. Instead of being completely encapsulated in its shell, this clade shell only covers its dorsal surface. Like its cousins, this clade has muscle-like fibers. This clade, however, uses these muscular tissues to undulate their underside, allowing them to drag themselves across the ocean floor, similar to the molluscan foot. It reproduces by detecting pheromones released by potential mates. When potential mates are found, they raise their mouths off the ground and excrete gametes from them. In the event that it cannot find any mates, this organism can reproduce asexually, much like planarians on Earth. This motile organism is called diastoma, and it appeared 5.58 billion years ago. On Earth, a phenomenon called neoteny has occurred in many different clades. Neoteny is an evolutionary mechanism where mature organisms retain traits from their younger forms. One example of this is how axolotls have gills their whole lives, unlike other salamanders that lose them as they mature. On Primin B, this happened in dorsostomes, when one clade retained their larval form for their entire lives. This benefited them because of the vast amounts of areosomes they could eat in the ocean's pelagic zone and a lack of competition. They monopolized this by increasing in size, which allows them to eat more until they reach a size that balances how much they eat and the required amount of energy to function. In order to remain floating their entire lives, this organism became composed of thinner, less dense tissues. These organisms have little motor control, only being able to use its arms to scoop microbes and areosomes into its mouth. Consuming large amounts of areosomes gives some of these organisms an orange color. Their gonad develops early in their lives, which allows them to release their gametes into the water while remaining suspended. 
Due to a lack of predators and being able to reproduce by the thousands, this organism will exist in large, densely packed populations. These pelagic filter feeders are called polybrachids for their many arms, and they appeared 5.56 billion years ago. As populations of polybrachids began to climb, areosomes that are able to avoid getting eaten have an advantage. Like Tenex malia, one clade of areosomes developed a biological adhesive that allowed cells to stick together. This clade of areosomes makes clumps large enough so that they can no longer fit in polybrachids' mouths. However, this makes them become dense enough to sink to the sea floor. Even though there is less polybracket activity on the sea floor, dorsostomes and diastomes could feed on this clade. In response to this, these areosome colonies grew even larger and developed more organized structures. Some cells specialize to become an upright stalk that holds the larger organism to the substrate. Coming from two sides of the stalk are surfaces meant specifically for photosynthesis. This organism looks like a plant, but since it does not share taxonomy with earth plants, it is technically something else. For purposes of simplicity though, members of this clade may be called plants. This clade of multicellular areosomes is called areostipula. It appeared 5.55 billion years ago. Even though areostipula evolved to avoid being eaten, one clade of diastomes adapted to make it their primary food source. This clade's mouth parts are raised to its anterior face so that it can reach Aurea stipula, but only eating specific foods is difficult unless the organism can sense it. To identify food, this clade developed a simple eye. This eye started as a patch of photosensitive cells that could detect changes in light levels. Over time, this eye became more complex. The patch of cells eventually formed a cup shape that allowed the detection of light from multiple directions. This cup later developed a spherical layer of tissue and cone-like cells that could distinguish colors. These cones have two varieties. One can detect red light while the other can detect blue light. This allows them to see the orange area stipula through the background of the blue ocean. To process this visual information, this organism developed a clump of nerve-like cells that act as a simple brain. On Earth, organisms usually evolve for their brain, sensory organs, and mouths to be at the front of the body in a process called cephalization. This organism will also experience cephalization. At first, their digestive system will act like those of their diastome ancestors. This began to change as mutations caused them to favor one mouth for ingestion of food and the other for the excretion of waste. The mouth that ingested more food became more rigid and gained a slightly rough texture. Rubbing this mouth on the surface of its food allowed the organism to masticate the food before eating it. The position of its mouths also changed. Both mouths move to the center of the organism's face closer to the eye, with their ingestion mouth being directly over their excretion mouth. After this development, its previous blind gut adapted into a through gut, acting as a tube for food to travel through rather than a sac that pumps food in and out. This more efficient form of digestion allowed this clade to grow larger, but their size is limited by their ability to passively diffuse oxygen from the water. To solve this, this clade developed tissues along the underside of their shells which are specialized to draw oxygen from the water. The oxygen collected by this tissue is diffused into a body cavity that circulates fluids. This cavity is called a hemocele, and it exists in earth arthropods. Inside of this hemocele is red, iron-based blood. With blood, this organism is able to efficiently transport oxygen and nutrients, allowing it to grow larger and more complex. Since this organism can now see its potential mates, broadcast spawning became an obsolete form of reproduction. Instead, this clade developed a ring-like organ in their excretory mouth that acts as a gonad where gametes are produced. When this organism finds a mate, they act in a cloacal kiss to exchange gametes. When these two gametes meet, they form a membrane of sac where offspring develop. Since this organism is now so complex, it lost the ability to reproduce asexually. This complex organism is called tubostoma, and it appeared 5.54 billion years ago. As tubostomes continued to spread and evolve, some of them began to find nutrients from different food sources. One clade with rougher mouth parts allowed it to masticate tougher foods, such as dorsostomes. This clade continued to invest more into carnivory like this, beginning to eat falling dorsostome larvae. By undulating its foot vertically, this organism was able to swim slightly above the ocean floor where it could feed on more low swimming dorsostome larvae. Its heavy shell, however, made the organism too heavy to remain swimming for long periods of time. Since there are no present predators or extreme environmental hazards, losing the shell became beneficial for the organism. 
Without its shell, the organism can swim for longer periods of time. Natural selection continued to select for better swimmers that can more effectively hunt. This eventually led to the development of a fin of sorts made of soft membranes that surrounds the back half of the organism. The muscle fibers that controlled its foot adapted to control this fin, making it flap in a pattern similar to earth cuttlefish. Its diet mainly consists of dorsostome larvae and polybrachids, but it may supplement this diet with small seafloor organisms. This clade of active predators is called the Terramorpha, and it appeared 5.535 billion years ago. 541 million years ago on Earth, the introduction of active predation kickstarted an arms race. Animals began to rapidly evolve, competing with each other for food and trying to defend themselves from predators, while the predators evolved to get past their prey's defense. This event is called the Cambrian Explosion, and it was a pivotal point for the natural history of Earth. In the next episode, we will explore prim and B's response to active predators and the boom in biodiversity that will result from it. If you would like to further explore prim and B or talk about its life, join our Discord server in the description below. On our Discord server, you can talk about the Primin universe as well as get looks at future organisms, make art, get updates on video progress, and even help make decisions about Primin B's organisms.